Hey, there it is. I'm live. All right, you're live on Facebook. Yes, my friend. Good, good. So if you want to uh, hop on Facebook and uh, and get a load of Dick, there he, he's. You are on Facebook. What is the? Uh... Oh, it's a Littleton Historical Museum. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Which makes it uh, very nice. Yep. And he's, he's a yep. And I take these and I usually download them onto our um, our page. Our yes. um, yeah. What is it? Our channel. Your channel, right? Your YouTube channel. YouTube channel, yeah. and that is Littleton Historical Society. Nice. And when you see that, that's uh, you got it. So I download. You can binge watch Littleton history. That's right. That's right. It's, I love that stuff. It's it's just kind of neat stuff. I like that a lot. I had a question for you, but I knew it was going to leave me if I didn't write it down. So so I'm not going to ask you because I don't remember. That's perfectly all right. I spend my life doing that. I will remember eventually. <laughs> I really that had to do with the place where I was and a building that uh, may or may not have uh, been there before. A place that you yeah. was? Yeah, you were? A place that I was. <laughs> okay. You don't a, remember where you were? A, a place that I were. Is You're, that it? You don't no. remember where you were? No, I don't remember where I was. Okay. Well, when you do, give me a yell. Okay, I will. <laughs> I'm here, you know. Three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, remember you said give me a yell? Give me a, no, not a three. <laughs> not a three. No, yeah. no. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, we have Dick Alberini in here. He's going to tell us what's happening uh, in and around the Opera House, obviously. You guys are back open again at the uh, museum. At the museum, we are open, and uh, we are following COVID. Uh, you know, we have we have some regulations that we're following that we, we created. And, uh, you know, just trying to be safe, keep people safe, and keep us open. So uh, when you get to the door upstairs, there is a greenish paper, right. and it has all of our protocols. So when you get there, just call downstairs to the museum and say, we're upstairs, and right. I will come up, get you, take your temperature, and Excellent. hand sanitize you, uh, spray you with steam, <laughs> put you in a plastic bag, and bring you downstairs. And then do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, do it all over again. Oh, I see Cindy's there. I, so I, get somebody on Facebook? I right got, here. yes. Okay. Uh, Cindy P is one of my former students. And she's a follower of uh, of all the programming that we do. And Excellent. it's great to have a, a fan like Cindy. Yeah. And am I wow. cockeyed on this? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it, it, it the, um, it's, it doesn't look right to you? Yeah, the horizon looks like it's off? Yeah. Well, well that's okay. No, well, we'll you, work you can on turn it. it. All you have to do is like adjust it either way, whatever makes it look better. Well, I'm going to get some, here. Wait a minute. Let's try to do this. <laughs> you gonna hey, you can do that. Well, you can do that. Oh, my God. What, what he's doing is he's, he's putting it straight Oh, straight wait a minute. Down. I'm sideways. Cindy? You're sideways, not sideways. How's that? Is that good? That better? Maybe. Yeah, she okay. wrote. I couldn't read it because she was sidewards. Oh, okay. So, you so can now see. I'm sidewards, and now I'm I I got this you straight can going. See all of you. I can see you all the whole back. It looks like I'm in a radio station. Well, you are. <laughs> yep. You so, are. Uh, Cindy, does it look like I'm I'm? Is this good? She'll answer you. I'm sure in, a, in just a minute. All right. So uh, coming back up, what are we going to be talking about when we come back? Okay, we're talking about movie theaters. Oh. And good. this is really fascinating. I, I, I found it fascinating and it's just kind of a cool thing. So we're going to be having a break. Okay. So listen, this will be a slight intermission. Go out, get your popcorn and your soda and then come back. Don't miss this. This is really cool stuff. Can't wait. I can't wait. Cindy, is, is it happening? Are we straight? Are we good? It's a beautiful day. Room 5 in St. Johnsbury and Room 302 in Wells River. Don't miss this introductory price of just $245 a time. Dad's for my tools. Okay. I, I, it's the last she wrote was that I was sideways. Are you still sideways now? Oh, well, no, she's not responding. You should be able to put it back that way. You should be fine. Yeah, but it, it won't rotate. Is it locked? I Try it again. Try to turn it and see what happens. Oh, see, you'll see it change. No, it didn't. Rotate your device. You can't turn your phone while live. Oh. 
Well, you could shut it off and come back on again. I got Phil. Wait, Phil. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. All right. You still got me? Oh, I got something coming on. Yeah. Still working? Well, I'm going to put this back up here. And uh, we'll just go from there and see what happens. But I, I'm seeing that Cindy is, her little icon up in the corner is like flashing off and on. Hmm. May I take a look? Go right ahead. Gonna, I just want to turn it to see what we see. Yeah, that should be good, actually. Yeah. It, it's still sideways? No, no. Before she did right back. Were, yeah. I don't think you are now. I see what you're talking about. The, uh, yeah, Whoa. Okay. Sorry about that. We dropped everyone. Sorry, guys. There we go. I'm a squeezing. I won't bother you anymore. Okay. Uh, it didn't hurt it, did it? No. Good. She stopped flashing. If you're no, still, if you're looking at you okay right now, you should be good. I'm looking at me okay. Okay. All right. It is. We got 30 seconds. Okay. All right, right now we're looking at our tundra temperature around 55 degrees. It's yeah, it, going between 55 and 55. It actually is not too bad out there. It's okay. rather... Yeah. Balmy. It, it's almost on the balmy side. It is. Okay. All right. So. So you are talking theater. Yes, we're talking theater, movie theaters. Movie theater. So I'd like to tell you a little story that um, just, it, it was kind of cool. Uh, being at the museum, we have no idea who's going to visit us no. and how we run into people. And so I received a, a, an email from a gentleman who has a summer place. Uh, and it's, it was in a family. He told me it was in a family for generations. Right. And it's in uh, Jefferson. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, so he's, he was interested in, in movie theaters, in, in motion pictures uh, for the area, for Littleton. And uh, so I wrote back to him and I said, well, we had the premiere, we had the star, uh, we have the Jacks Jr. And my knowledge wasn't that extensive. Right. It's, it's kind of like we have uh, 10 file cabinets down there and I have yet to memorize everything in the file cabinets. Right. So, or even read what's in the file cabinets. There's a lot. But I know we had some, some information on movie theaters. Yes. So, um, what was kind of cool is uh, we made an appointment and he came in uh, last Wednesday and uh, we started looking for things and we're still working on the filing system because uh, I, I knew we had some, some information, but we were looking under T and you can't find anything under theaters. Oh, I see, gotcha. So finally, someone came across M for yeah. movies. For movies, of course. Of course. And um, so he started you know, going through, we started looking at stuff and I, I started learning a lot. And, and I said, well, do you know the uh, movie theater, the Star Theater that was in the Solomon Block right. burnt twice in 1912 and 1917? Mm -hmm. And I told him how I had had an opportunity to go over there with Gordy Fisher yes. uh, oh, before yeah. they built the apartments yeah. and to see the charred remains. They were still, the, the beams were charred downstairs from the 1917 fire. Yeah. Their proscenium, uh, which is the stage, the part of the stage was still, still there. Still there. Uh, and if people remember the gym, the Nautilus and, yep. and the subsequent gyms to uh, follow, they uh, th at the end there was an arch and it looked like it might have been a theater at one time. Yep. Well, that was the top part of the theater and that's where the screen would be. Yep. And it went down cellar and you could see the bottom part of the theater because what they did is they divided the floor space yep. and they just kept the proscenium there and up toward the ceiling 
was the stage. Right. Okay. And uh, and this is the ceiling in the basement, uh, right right just below the floor for the uh, gym. You can see on the on the actual wall itself the line of where the floor was. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, on the walls, you could see the the steps because yeah. the seats were stepped. Yes. So, um, like at the movie theater, we you know at movie theater now it's at an angle, so you won't have someone's head right in front of you, exactly. or hopefully not have someone's head right hopefully. in front of you. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we we were talking, and he had his computer and his phone, and he's taking pictures, and and I had asked uh, Sharon Craig, I said, could you could you do a little bit of research for me, and uh, for a person who doesn't come into the museum to to volunteer, she's an awesome volunteer. Uh, she found all sorts of newspaper clippings. And I started to take, I downloaded them, printed them out, we cut them, we're, we're building our files very well. And um, so I, the, the, the gentleman and I were talking, his name is James, and, uh, and I said, I didn't ask him where he worked. He said, well, you know, I, I work in a, in, in a, uh, a library and, and, and I'm familiar. And when I told about the fire, uh, one of the articles said how Mr. Solomon had just purchased a uh, a, a, a movie projector, yeah. and it was still fairly new, and it was destroyed in a fire. And he said, "Well, oh, he said, did, did you mention what brand it was?" And he started mentioning brands, and I'm going, "Okay, this guy's going back to 1917 he's, and mentioning brands, he's, so he's, he's got going. to know something." Well, come to find out, the man does work in a library. Oh, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. the Library of Congress. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and his speciality is cinematography and filmology. And he does live full-time in Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. And he was telling me, he says, well, you know, we, we were talking about the different films, uh, materials used for films, mm -hmm. and the early films were made of a substance that were highly flammable, that actually would burst into flame. Yeah, sure. Okay, and uh, he says we have several vaults that have just those, and they're they're under special uh, atmospheric conditions. He's then he, then he said how many uh, vaults that they did have loaded loaded with movies. Well, that kind of got my head going and. I started to get giddy like a little child, and I said, well, you know something, I've been looking for the um, newsreel, or a newsreel, depicting the April 5th, 1941, Betty Davis extravaganza on Main Street, oh, yes. when Littleton had a world premiere of a movie, which was The Great Lie, and I looked everywhere for it, everywhere, and I can't find it. And I showed him photographs. I said, I know there were there were newsreel cameras. Oh, they had And them. I showed him photographs, and he said, you know, if we could read what's on the side of the cameras, we could probably get the company that did the uh, the, the pho uh, photography. Really? And we might have that. He says we have an extensive collection of newsreels uh, going back to when they were first created. Right. So he's con going to. Um, give a shot if I can get some more information and I have his email and he's going to give a shot at trying to find the Betty Davis um, the Betty Davis newsreel that's awesome yeah isn't I'd that, like to see that isn't that the coolest thing I want to see the movie um, and uh, we did I show it at the, I, I, I'm thinking it would be kind of a cool thing once when the pandemic has subsided and we can get back together I would like to show the movie The Great Lie at the Opera House, right? And I would like to have the newsreel to go along with it. Can you imagine putting that first? Like that in? would be just. Uh, I'm sure we could get uh, uh, quite a few people to come into this, right. and uh, and you know participate in it. So it was really the guy was fascinating, and obviously he knew what he was talking about. Oh sure. Uh, I did not know his other credentials, but my guess is he's got to have a Ph.D. in this, because one does not work at the Library of Congress, and and he's done. He's been there for 25 years. They don't just take anybody. They just don't take no. anybody. So I just very, very, very interesting. So I thought that I would share that with everyone. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. So we started digging into the history of movie theaters yes. in the town of Littleton. Well, we came across a newspaper article. Now, Rouncevelt Hall. Do we yes, know where that is? I do. You I don't do? Okay, I'm going to tell you. There is a ladies, nice ladies clothing store. It's called Jackson Corners. Oh, yeah, I know now, exactly. Now, some of you listening in on, uh, on Facebook may know where this is. It's also a tuxedo rental. Right. Well, by the way, that is Rouncevelt Hall. Ah, that's okay? what it's called. That's what it's called. Now, he had asked me if the second and third floors were once open. Uh, for example, there was no floor. It was like when you went in, it would be like a two-story opening in there, like like an op a small opera house. Okay. Yeah. And I said, I don't think it was because what I do remember is there was an open hall in it, but then there were also tenements, apartments in it. Right. So it showed that there was a company from Boston who would come to Littleton and set up their projector and show moving pictures oh, yes. in the hall. Now, the more I delve into this, the more I, uh, I get childhood memories come back. And I've mentioned this once before. Uh, my grandmother, who was born in 1879, uh, used to say when I would go to the movies, she'd say, you're going to the pictures. And that was the way people, it was. It was the pictures. Movies. Didn't say movies. No. You're going to the pictures. All right. Another thing, picture show. Yep. Uh, another term from that isn't used an awful lot or at all. Mm -hmm. So they would show they would show movies. Now that would be kind of like the first thing. Now the first movie theater in town was the Grand. The Grand. Yeah, that sounds uh, familiar. Nineteen oh eight. Yeah, not that I was there, but I think you <laughs> heard you talk about it before. <laughs> all right, the Grand, and what they did is they rented a room at the Northern Hotel, which I have said many, many times was used across the street, used to be across the street where the movie theater is. Yes. Place burnt, the whole thing burnt uh, to the ground 1924. Right. And so they rented rooms in there. And we have to remember that movies, we, we go to a movie now and you're there for 90 minutes, two hours, two and a half hours seeing a movie. Yeah. Well, they didn't make movies there. Were, if, if it was an hour movie, it was like five reels. Sure, sure. You know, 20 minute reels, 15 minute reels. So what would happen, they had one projector, they would get to the end of the reel, there would be an intermission, they'd change reels, then you would end up seeing part two, and then they'd change reels, you'd see part three. And so there was this, this movement, this constant movement in the, uh, in the theater, the projection room. Yeah. So they were on the first floor, and it said it used to be a barbershop and pool hall. <laughs> okay? And it was a section, if you looked at the Northern Hotel, it was on the right-hand side, and there was a veranda, a porch there, and you would go through the porch, and you would go into the room where you would enjoy a movie. Well, after that, there was another theater that was called the Theratorium. And I... I I had no idea what that was until the research started coming out. Same location. It was in the same location, and it was called the Theratorium. I love this word. It's a combination of theater and auditorium. Ah, Theratorium. Theratorium. Okay. Uh, or Theratorium. Theratorium. The, I'm mispronouncing it. Okay. Pronouncing it. Okay. All right. Located in the same place as the Grand in the hotel, but it was more than just a movie theater. The owners provided concerts, concerts, dances, talent nights, poetry readings, and lectures. Lectures, okay. So you just didn't go to this place uh, to see a movie, or you went to see maybe a one real movie, right, right. Uh, or two reels. Uh, you would see maybe 15 minutes to 30 minutes of movies, then you would get a lecture. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of cultural things. They also would do slideshows. And the slides were glass slides. And um, well, there would be a reading. Someone would do a reading. And as they did the reading, the slide would be projected up onto the screen. Like a film strip. It like a, Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Just like a film strip. And it may be like a film strip. Might have writing 
on the bottom, some sort of typing, sure. and you would have a piano player. Yeah. All right, and so people would follow. There'd be background music, and this would cost anywhere from five to ten cents to wow. go to see. It was a lot then. Uh, children would be a nickel. Adults would be a dime. Where else can you buy a kid for a nickel? You, I'll tell you. Sometimes people try to sell them for a nickel. <laughs> All right. So anyway, another thing we came across is uh, we don't think of Lisbon of have as having a movie theater, and there are po people. People. <laughs> there are people who remember uh, the Empress Theater in Lisbon. Oh, what As was a that? matter of fact, uh, that I don't know. Hmm. I and, can say where I think it might have been. And it is, uh, it's it disappeared many years ago. Right. But I, uh, I was talking to Joe Noyes, who is one of our key volunteers at the museum. Right. She remembered as a child, her father would take would take she and her siblings to the movies to the in Lisbon yeah. that was around 1950 yeah. 49 or 50 well I said well that kind of makes sense because Littleton didn't have a movie theater then because the Jack the, the premier theater That's burnt in 1949 right. and Jack Eames rebuilt it yes. uh, and it opened around late 50 maybe 51 that it opened. We have photographs, uh, newspaper articles uh, of the o grand opening of the Jacks Jr. Theater. Yes. So, anyway, they used to go to the Empress, but also during that time period, the Opera House was used. Uh, Mr. Eames, Jack Eames, had permission to use the Opera House to show movies. Oh, wow. Well. Now, here's the kicker. We are familiar with the chandelier in the opera house, the yes. big lighting fixture Huge. up in that dome. Okay, that's not the original. Oh. That is a reproduction of the original. Oh. And it does look like the original, but the original disappeared. No one knows to where. Oh, no. And uh, because in 1984, when Littleton was hitting its bicentennial and they were redoing the opera house, people were looking for the original, could not find it. Now, I had heard a rumor that it was removed because the it was in the way of the projector. The projector was up in the balcony and it would uh, project down to the down to the screen that they set up a screen and it would cast a shadow. Oh. So it was removed so it wouldn't cast a shadow and where it was removed to still remains a mystery. Nobody knows where it is. Nobody. Nobody knows what happened to it. Check Alberini's house. Yeah, I, yeah, my ceilings aren't that high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just kind of a neat, neat thing. Right. So I, I do have uh, from uh, May 28th, 1908, uh, thanks to Sharon, I have a newspaper article mm -hmm. called Moving Pictures. Okay. The Grand Moving Picture Company has rented the room in the Hotel Northern Building until recently used for a barbershop and pool rooms. Commencing Saturday, two entertainments of moving pictures, illustrated songs, and phonograph concerts Ooh. will be given. These are the crank-up phonographs. Yes. And people, these are expensive. Very. And 1908, just, it, you didn't go into everyone's average house and find a wind-up phonograph. No, that was, that was big money. Yeah, extreme big money. So... People would go and see these marvels of technology and listen to these marvels of technology. Um, and it said, uh, let's see, photograph give, uh, concert will be given one in the afternoon from 3 to 5.30 and the other one in the evening from 7.15 to 10.30. So they did have, you know, people stayed out late at night. Oh, sure. And, <laughs> That and, was late uh, then. But that was, that was uh, you know, I think that was kind of cool. Sure. Now, um, I have a uh, the New Star Theater. Now, this is from April 13th, 1911. The New Star Theater, uh, Saturday night, marked the opening of the new motion picture theater in Littleton in the new auditorium in the Solomon Block. Now, this is the auditorium that I told you about. I got to visit that that burned yes okay uh, there was a large and appreciative audience during the entire evening the new quarters seemed to meet with approval as expressions of delight were heard from all 
as they enter the hall. Mr. Solomon, the owner, has made every effort to provide for the comfort and enjoyment of his patrons. And the star, the name by which the new theater is known, will be a popular amusement place. The carpenters are still busy putting on final touches, and the side exit and stairway leading up to the street at the end of the bridge is expected to be in order this week. Ooh. Now, if I remember correctly, on the side of the building, there is a, um, a fire escape yes, there is. that goes down. So yeah. when the gym was there, when you went into the area where the proscenium was, and that's, right. I think they kept weights in there and had uh, exercise bands, there was a door that you could take and go out and then walk up to the bridge on the side of the building. Yes, it's still okay. there. And it is still there. Yep. So um, you have to keep in mind that at this time it was a wooden block. It, okay. it was built out of it was built out of wood. It was right. not brick. Okay, um, and so the theatorium was actually purchased by Mr. Solomon, moved over there, and then he changed it to the Star when they renovated the space. <laughs> okay. Cool. I mean, Littleton was just... It, this, it was hopping. I think it's just... <laughs> this is just really cool stuff. We're it's, busy and on the forefront of a lot of things. People people wonder, you know, they look at like, we're here we are in 2020, and there's so much to do, and they look back at the time, like uh, uh, 112 years ago, yeah. like people just sat around saying, well, what are you doing tonight? I don't know, I think I'm going to sit here and wait to die. Uh, it's like, no, people no, people, people lived, people did things. And as I used to tell my students, remember the world wasn't created the day you were born, nor the day I was born. It was going pretty strong well before we arrived here. And the how the world changes due to us is up to us. Up to us, sure. Okay? So it was, remember it was located where Nautilus was. Just think of the, of the gym having no floor, that you would come downstairs, uh, down into the gym, and there's no floor, and just keep right on going. Just keep going, yep. All right, keep right on going. All right, uh, then the fire, here we go. Now this is uh, the 11th of April, 1917, and it says, uh, Mr. Solomon estimated his loss close to $75,000. It says the company also loses all of the furnishings at the Star Theater. So there was, you know, that was just major. The Premier Theater was opened in 1917. So at one time we had both, both the Star and the Premier Theater, and they were both owned by the same people ah. because the Star Theater was sold. Uh, so it was like monopoly, like you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll buy your mortgage right. from you, <laughs> and things like that. So our movie theaters really work. So, folks, we're done. Come back next week. Check us out on Facebook, and uh, be safe. <laughs> Sorry, but I can't stop it. No, nope, that's okay. I just had so much stuff. You had a lot of stuff, but that's good, though. All right. I don't know if it works. Cindy, did it work? Last thing I heard from her is that I was sidewards. Uh, and good morning. Okay. The theater in Lisbon was located on the main street where the park is located as you go left over the bridge. I believe it was owned by owned by my cousin whose last name was Corey, related to attorney Bob Corey's brother. Attorney Bob Corey? Mm -hmm. but there was an, I don't remember Bob Corey. I, there was an Alexander Corey who was an yeah, attorney. Yeah, a bunch of Corys, wasn't there? Yeah, Al Alexander, uh, Dorothy's, uh, Dottie Corey's father was Alex Corey. Uh, and he was a, an attorney.